All right, well, welcome back. My name is Ryan, and this is my wife, Janine, my co-host beside me here. And you're listening to the Better Living Concepts Book Club. And this particular series, we are continuing in the Sun Food Diet Success System by David Wolf. And we're going to be diving into Lesson 7. We just finished up uh, the first six lessons, which were all about mindset. And kind of took us by surprise that he talked about all that kind of stuff before diving into the actual sun food diet content. So that was interesting and uh, really appreciated it actually because it kind of gives you a whole different feel uh, and, and frame of mind uh, as you dive into the, the message of his, of his book in its entirety. Uh, so lesson seven uh, is a long lesson as he is giving you the 40,000 foot overview um, of the rest of the book. So there's, it's a lot of pages. So we're going to break it up and we're going to do five different sections on lesson seven. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll deal with a few pages and share some, some of our thoughts on it. And then, um, and then we'll do a new episode for like 7B, if you will, or something like that for the rest of the episodes or for the rest of the chapter. Uh, so a couple of quotes here. Um, first one, Genesis 1.29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to be your food. And from the Essene Gospel of Peace, book one, uh, translated by, Ed by Edmund Bordeaux, Kelly. Okay. <laughs> Kill neither man nor beasts, nor yet the food which goes into your mouth. For if you eat living food, the same will quicken you. But if you kill your food, the dead food will kill you also. For life comes only from life, and from death comes always death. For everything which kills your foods kills your bodies also. And everything which kills your bodies kills your souls also. And your bodies become what your foods are, even as your spirits likewise become what your thoughts are. Therefore, eat not anything which fire or frost or water has destroyed, for burned, frozen, or rotted foods will burn, freeze, and rot your body also. Wow. Okay, and uh, next is uh, from Dugal Semple, The Sun Food Way to Health. Why all this cooking when there is really no cook like old soul? Cooked food is dead food. And remember, the whiter the bread, the sooner we are dead. Every attempt to improve on natural food must prove a failure. And nature will react at first acutely to any interference with her benef beneficent laws of health. And if we continue to disobey her laws by drugs or even surgery, the symptoms may disappear for a while, only to reappear in chronic or fatal diseases. Man is the only creature that cooks his food, and he is more subject to disease than any wild creature that dines on unfried food. Tradition, gluttony, and increasing desire for strong stimulants have caused man to prefer cooked food, which has seriously weakened his digestive organs. This is because cooked food can be swallowed so easily without chewing, whereas thorough mastication is essential to good health. Wow. Your food determines in a large measure how long you shall live and how much you shall enjoy life and how successful your life shall be. That's Dr. Kirshner, Live Food Juices. All right. Mm. So here we go, lesson seven. What we eat deeply and radically affects the way we think, feel, and behave. We are what we eat, and we eat what we are. Food affects every aspect of our being. Food is the foundation of our physical body. If the foundation is stable, all that is built upon it will be stable. Everything you physically are was once the air you breathed, the water you drank, and the food you ate. The colloidal mineral structure of your body is built out of the foods you have eaten. If there is an alteration in the food, then it is reflected in the look and function of the body. Improve your food choices and you dramatically improve the foundation upon which your body is built. Success is an accumulation of practicing fundamentals each and every day. 
and eating is a daily activity of vital importance that cannot be overlooked. A consistent habit of making excellent food choices is an absolute necessity for a successful life. From average to exceptional is just a slight edge. The proper diet gives you a slight edge and a hundred times more. When you give your body incredible food, you will function incredibly. To achieve your mission on earth, you need excellent health and a supreme physical support system to get you there. Excellent dietary habits support your body and mind on the path to reaching amazing goals. When your diet is pure, the planet freely bestows its wealth upon you. Diet is the mysterious key to lifelong massive abundance. Diet is the key to the natural way of life. A wonderful life requires a natural diet rich in sun-grown foods eaten in their pristine raw state. If we think about it logically, when we arrived on the planet we had no tools, clothing, or fire. How did we live? What did we eat? There must be some original diet. A diet we were biologically designed for. A diet that is the optimal diet for humankind. Simplicity. Success is nothing more than a refined study of the obvious. Jim Rohn. Whatever must be proven is already doubtful. Professor Arnold Errett. Simplicity is now, has always been, and will forever be the key guideline of success. The fact that there is more confusion, conflicting opinions, and false information concerning the field of diet now available than ever before is proof that there must be some simple truth beneath it all. There are always many opinions, but only one truth. In science, there is a principle called Occam's Razor. The principle tells us that amongst competing theories, the simplest is most likely to be true. Natural law is simplicity itself. A great axiom states, once you are complicated, you are ineffective. A great reason for my success and the success of others on the Sun Food Diet program is its incredible simplicity. Whatever simple reasoning cannot ascertain is nonsense and should be dis dispensed with. Nothing vital is complicated. There is a poetry, a powerful truth in simple facts. The simpler things are, the easier it is to live. Foragers and gatherers were the original affluent society on earth. The best things in life are free, for life depends on simplicity. The worst things in life are paid for with wasted life force energy, for death depends on confusion. People confuse things in direct proportion to their simplicity. Anytime, if you feel you're being overwhelmed with information, simplify. Just get back to basics. All the greatest sports coaches the world has ever seen taught basics. Simple basics practiced over and over make enormous improvements in the long term. Here are the basics of nutrition. Raw plant foods. Cooked food was not here when we first appeared on earth. Raw plant food is truly the most perfect food for human consumption. The structure and function of humanity's teeth, jaw, digestive canal, sense organs, instincts of the young, psychological aversion towards killing, emotional feelings towards animals, as well as the cause and cure of disease and unhappiness, all demonstrate that humans are biologically and primarily raw plant eaters primarily consumers of sweet, non-sweet, and fatty fruits, as well as green-leafed vegetables. See Lesson 9, Origins and Appendix A. Do you know the power of getting energy solely from plants? Every whole plant food is a symphony. The absorption and organization of sunlight, the essence of life, takes place primarily in plants. The organs of the plant are therefore a kind of biological accumulation of sun energy. Eating plant foods transfers the vital sun energy directly to you, undiminished. Raw plant foods are massively abundant. 99.99% of all food on earth is raw plant food. In the grand scheme of things, cooked food is non-existent, and animal food for, uh, for omnivores and carnivores is minimal as the plant eaters, mostly insects, are by far 
the dominant creatures on Earth. Eating raw plant foods provides you with an unlimited variety of food choices. There are so many raw plant foods on this planet and you could taste something new every single day for the rest of your life and still not even come remotely close to trying 1% of what is here on Earth. Oh. For instance, there are over 500 varieties of avocados and there are at least 80 varieties of persimmons. There are even over 300 varieties of durian. Oh. Raw plant foods fall into 14 major categories. One, fruits. Fruits are raw plant foods that contain the seed within themselves for the reproduction of their kind. Fruits may be sweet, non-sweet, or fat dominant. Two, leaves. Leaves contain life-giving chlorophyll pigments and are the best source of alkaline minerals. Many herbs are green leaves. Three, nuts. Nuts are the reproductive agents of certain trees. They are fat dominant foods. Four, seeds. Seeds are the reproductive agents of plants. Depending on the type, they may be protein dominant or fat dominant. Grains are seeds. Five, legumes. Legumes include all peas, beans, and peanuts and are often sprouted before consumption. They are protein dominant with the exception of peanuts which are fat dominant. 6. Flowers. Flowers are the sexual organs of plants. 7. Green sprouts. Green sprouts appear when sprouted seeds or legumes reach a certain point of growth and shoot forth green leaves. 8. Roots. Roots are the below ground portion of plants. 9. Shoots. Shoots are young plants spread by underground runners from their parent plants. 10. Bark. The outer protective layer of trees. Inner barks are occasionally used as foods or for teas. 11. Sap. The life fluid of a tree. Maple syrup comes from maple water, the sap of the maple tree. B. propolis is made from the tree sap. 12. Stems. Stems are the fibrous structural pieces of plants. 13. Water vegetation. Sea vegetables are sea plant leaves containing bountiful minerals drawn in from the ocean and up from the ocean floor. Spirulina and algae of all types are included in this category. And 14 is mushrooms, a non-chlorophyll fungus that grows primarily in darkness and is not directly nourished by the vibrant sun energy, yet plays a critical role in the recycling biological minerals in old trees and the soil. Mushroom extracts can be an outstanding source of medicine, ergo reishi, cordyceps, maitake, etc. What is the sun food diet? The Sun Food Diet Success System is really the raw food diet success system. I use the term sun food because it implies raw plant food grown under the vivifying influence of direct sunlight in a wild natural state. Sun food has a refreshing majestic quality to it. Raw food is ambiguous. Raw food could mean anything raw. Mm -hmm. The Sun Food Diet is a diet of abundance. The Sun Food Diet Success System demystifies the raw food diet and presents a program that allows anyone to achieve the goal of, a, of succeeding with a raw plant food diet. Of all the raw plant foods on earth, the Sun Food Diet requires that 80% or more of your food choices contain a balance of green leaf vegetables, sweet fruits, and fatty plant foods. The other 20% can contain any of the 14 kinds of raw plant foods mentioned above or other foods that you feel are appropriate for you. This diet is not about denial. It's about success and achievement. The idea behind the Sun Food Diet is to eat at least 80% raw plant foods and then move forward in your life from there. And that's where we'll stop for the reading on chapter lesson seven for this episode. 
Um, four more to come on this lesson, but um, right out of the gate there, what would you notice? Wow. Um, the first thing that really struck me was variety. Yes. Um, you know, when he lays it out like this, 14 major categories mm -hmm. um, that raw plant foods fall into, it certainly doesn't sound limiting, does it? No. It sounds really interesting. Yes, very much so. Yeah. yeah. Creatively. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. you, you could get very creative, mm -hmm. you know, with how you mix all that together, for sure. Yeah. And I guess he, he does sum it up by saying the sun food diet is a diet of abundance. Mm -hmm. But you certainly felt that yeah. with that list. Um, I like the symphony idea. Yep. Right? Uh, do you know the power of getting energy solely from plants? Every whole plant food is a symphony. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the organs of the plant are therefore a kind of biological accumulation of sun energy. Eating plant foods transfers the vital sun energy directly to you undiminished. Yeah. Powerful. Yes, I thought it was. Um, this heading, I don't know if we read this, citrus fruits display the radiant sun energy that have alchemically transformed into edible magic. That was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, the structure and function of humanity's teeth, jaw, digestive canal, canal. <laughs> <laughs> Sense organs, instincts of the young, psychological aversion towards killing, emotional feelings towards animals, as well as the cause and cure of disease and unhappiness, all demonstrate that humans are biologically and primarily raw plant eaters, mm -hmm. primarily consumers of sweet, non-sweet, and fatty fruits, as well as green leaf vegetables. Yeah. Uh, I like this little thing that he said mm -hmm. here. Um, if there is an alteration in the food, then it is reflected in the look and function of the body. Mm -hmm. Right? So what he's saying, obviously, it, the inference there is that when you eat dead food, yes. your body is going to tend to look dead. Yes. You, it'll, it'll cause you to age faster. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the gist of that idea. Yes. Um, boy, that whole section really, he, he brings a lot of points home um, from average to exceptional is just a slight edge. Uh, to achieve your mission on earth, you need excellent health and a supreme physical support system. Mm -hmm. When your diet is pure, the planet freely bestows its wealth upon you. Yep. Diet is the mysterious key to lifelong massive abundance. Yeah, some really good points there. Yeah. Well, he's kind of continued in his writing style in that every every paragraph is a bullet point. Yes, right? for sure. He for just sure. packs so much in. Simplicity. Yes. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, um, and he kind of referenced the sporting thing there, but, but before he referenced the sporting thing and the coaches um, teaching the basics, I actually started thinking about oh, that as soon okay. as soon as he st started talking about simplicity. Uh, I was remembering back to my high school days playing basketball, mm -hmm. and whenever you know we might be up ten points in a game, and you know then the other team starts to come back, and coach will call a timeout, and the first thing he tells us, let's just get back to basics, mm -hmm. right? Back to the fundamentals, you know, solid passing, you know, don't shoot until you got a good shot. You know, or whatever, you know, a high percentage shot mm -hmm. and, and just be, you know, just good fundamentals. Uh, so that, that rang true for me, that idea of simplicity. Because I think it's true. I mean, yes. you get back to basics and those are the fundamental pillars, right? Love this quote, once you are complicated, you are ineffective. Ooh, yes. Nothing vital is complicated. Wow. Yeah. There are always many opinions, but only one truth. Simplicity is now, has always been, and will forever be the key guideline of success. So true. And of course, I mean, I love the Jim Rohn quote. <laughs> yeah, right? right? Who doesn't love a good Jim yes. Rohn quote? Success is nothing more 
than a refined study of the obvious. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, I guess it is to some degree sort of obvious. Yeah. You know, you, know you, you think about, and we've talked about some of this along the way so far in this journey of this book, and, and I know that he spent a long, he being David Wolf, spent a lot of time studying Jim Rohn and Napoleon Hill and Brian Tracy and the types, mm -hmm. Tony Robbins. Um, but they all kind of have that same philosophy. They all have that same idea of getting back to basics yes. and being and being having a simplicity. Mm -hmm. um, and so that makes perfect sense. And you know, in everything that we do, we should be looking for the obvious. We should be looking for what the simple is. Yes. You know. And again, getting back to the sports analogy, when you are able to when you're able to dribble better than anybody else because you've practiced it mm -hmm. more and longer than mm -hmm. anybody else um, you know when you when you stand at the free throw line I can remember doing this too I, I went to um, Lenny Wilkins basketball camp um, you know hundreds of kids there this was in the era when the Sonics won the championship back in 1979 and we got to play with you know Jack Sigma and Gus Williams they all Ooh. came out and DJ wow. and so they all came out and but one of the stations that we worked at was free throwing and so we all know if you, anybody knows anything about basketball the free throw is one of the most important parts of the game so i can remember what they were teaching us was that you would just shoot 100 free throws and that the idea was that you would do the exact same motions every single time if you bounce the ball you bounce it the same number of times if you however you you know put your stance you put your stance the same way every time but you shoot that ball 100 times every time you go to practice and so that's what I did I would stay after practice and I would shoot the free throw a hundred times and everybody else would be gone right and I would just shoot the free throw uh -huh. and lo and behold at the end of a game whenever there needed to be a, you know we were down by one or two points I would be the one they give the ball to because even if I miss I'd hopefully get a foul and I would go to the free throw line and they could trust that I was gonna make it 80% wow. of the time so that's the idea yeah right and I like the I like the analogy too. For I, I had a friend of mine who was a wrestler, and his coach told him, um, "What's your?" Asked him, "What's your favorite move?" And obviously, you know, he told him what his favorite move was. And he says, "I want you to practice that favorite move, however many times in you know whatever hundred times every practice. I want you to practice that." And he did, and he mastered that move. Wow! Right? Whenever he went into um, um, you know, a match that everybody knew he was going to do that move, but nobody could stop him. Right? That's that's the point. It was a fundamental that he practiced till he mastered it. But I'm kind of getting off tangent here. But you know, that's the simplicity of it, in my opinion. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you know, the way he's put this section together, um, I feel like it's already kind of changed changed or at least impacted my mindset hmm. um, in feeling or believing that maybe maybe the raw plant food diet is more natural yeah like maybe that is more um, basic original yes mm -hmm. so just starting to think that way I mean you know you grow up eating meat and you think that that's you know the the turkey on the Thanksgiving table or you think that that meat fatty foods um, highly processed foods are food but this is beginning a mind shift yeah just in reading these first sections and some of those quotes that you know we read were were pretty um, enlightening as well mm -hmm. so if your mind begins to shift to the concept of wait a second you know Raw plant food is truly the most perfect food for human consumption. That's on page 79. Um, people and confuse things in direct proportion to their simplicity. So, yeah. yeah. And dovetailing on what you just said, mm -hmm. or on page 79, over on page 80, mm -hmm. uh, the second paragraph there, do you know the power of getting energy solely from plants? Wow, yes. Yeah. Every whole food, every whole plant food is a symphony. That's where he brought in the symphony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yes. Yeah, so, you know, here we are. Again, we had, first, you know, six chapters of introduction. I mean, the, you know, 
the first two were pretty powerful as well. Uh, word from the author and mm -hmm. the introduction, and mm -hmm. then six chapters of mindset. And this is really mindset too. Yeah. Right? He's starting this again with sort of a mindset. Yeah. Um, infuse, you know, yeah. infusing the reader's mind with uh, a shift of yeah. thinking. Yep, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So at this point, um, because we're not at the end of the chapter, we are just doing the first one-fifth of the chapter. Mm -hmm. um, we don't really have any action steps. Right. Uh, but at this point, because we're going to do chapter seven in five sections, mm -hmm. Uh, this is a good time to remind people that if you haven't gotten a journal, highly recommend you get a journal. You know, even if it's just a spiral notebook that you bought at the dollar store, whatever it is, have yourself something bound that you can begin to write down your experience mm -hmm. in. And I would say go back and and look at the first six lessons and do the action mm -hmm. steps to get you up to chapter seven. Yes. I would almost say that we could actually do the first question. I'm going to just read that one. Oh, okay. It says, begin today by treating yourself to luscious fruits and beautiful salads. Mm. Eating raw foods has a cumulative effect. The more raw foods you eat over time, the better you feel. The less cooked foods you eat, the better you feel. Do your best to increase your raw food intake and specifically decrease your cooked food intake each day. Yeah. Visit a raw food restaurant. So I think that's something that we can yeah, do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah our listeners can do. Absolutely. It's a great point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for joining us uh, on this section of Lesson 7. Uh, we got four more sections in this uh, lesson, so we hope you'll join us again next week. Thanks again, and have a great day.